Sila. Sila is that which sets a limit to the outgoing exuberance in a person's actions of body and speech, and the responsibility for these actions and their results rests with the heart. Note. Outgoing exuberance is a translation of the Thai word ganong, which is more usually translated as high-spirited, exuberant. Thai English Student's Dictionary, Mary Haas. But the usage of the word in the context of this article is unusual, and means the display of self by way of body, speech, and thought, and involving the conceited opinion of self which such a display is designed to proclaim both to oneself and others. All of this arises from those defilements of character which are called ragatanha, sexual arousing. End note. Good people do not like to associate with someone whose outgoing exuberance is not restrained by sila, and nobody trusts him. In business and other affairs, even if there are only one or two people who have bad sila and no sense of shame in their behavior, it is certain that the social group in which they live and work cannot remain secure for long. It is bound to be destroyed or set in disorder by them in whatever way they can, as soon as they have a chance when others are off their guard. It is like living with a fierce, poisonous snake, which is just waiting to bite whenever one is unprotected. Thus, Sila is the Tamma which protects the world, keeping it cool and happy, so that there shall be no cause for doubt, suspicion, and mistrust which can arise from a mutual lack of confidence in those things which are liable to cause friction and trouble. These things often start in a small way and develop into larger things, things which everyone wants to avoid. Sila is of many kinds, but here we will only consider the five Sila, the eight, ten, and two hundred and twenty-seven Sila, which different kinds of people should variously maintain as it suits their status, age, and physical capabilities. The five Sila are the most important for lay people who have dealings with society in its various aspects. They should maintain these Sila as that which gives a recommendation of their individual personal integrity and of their mutual integrity thus keeping them from falling apart when they gain and lose from each other in business or society everywhere. It is noticeable how, if there are one or two people working in business, in a company, or in government service, who always maintain the five zila, they are just the people who are most liked, praised, and trusted in all kinds of affairs by their business associates, such as those affairs which are connected with money. Whether such people remain in that work or go elsewhere, they will be well liked and respected everywhere, because when they maintain sila, it means that they also have tamma within their hearts, like the taste of food which cannot be separated from its nature. And conversely, when such people have tamma within them, they also have sila, so that whenever they break any part of their sila, it means that at that time they do not have tamma within them, because tamma is associated with the heart, and sila is associated with bodily actions and speech. Therefore, the good and bad actions of the body and speech indicate and show the state of the heart, which is the leader and the one that is responsible. If the heart always has tamma within it, the ways of the body and speech are bound to be clean and free from blame in all their activities. Therefore, People who perform clean actions of body and speech proclaim by these actions that they are the kind of people who have tamma in their hearts and moral behavior in their actions, speech, and hearts. This attracts the hearts of other people everywhere so that they turn to such people, and so it is that they are always popular and well thought of in all ages. Even those who are unable to promote their actions, speech, and hearts in the foregoing way still have respect and reverence for those who have moral behavior in their actions, speech, and hearts, in the same way as all of us have respect and reverence for the Lord Buddha and his true followers, Zavaka. This indicates that moral behavior, meaning that which is good and graceful, is always desirable and valuable in the world, and is never out of date. Sometimes, however, it happens that the nature of moral behavior is altered from its true or inherent nature into doctrines and traditions which come from a people's national, class, or cultural background. This is the reason why moral behavior becomes a thing of nation, class, or cult, in accordance with these popular doctrines, and this is why different peoples throughout the world are constantly criticizing and blaming each other. 
But apart from this, moral behavior is the way of merit, which can always lead this age towards progress and development, for as long as people in this world are still interested in adjusting their own actions of body, speech, and heart to accord with the ways of moral behavior. Whenever the world has been disturbed and troubled, it is obvious that it is because people have been lacking in moral behavior, and nowadays, if people do not hasten to improve themselves in accordance with the true nature of moral behavior, the powers of the world will soon erupt in their full fury, and even those who wield the power will not survive, and all will be destroyed. But in particular, in each family circle, if Sila, which is the basis of proper behavior, is lacking, both husband and his wife will lack confidence in each other. Before long, there will arise doubts and suspicions that each is associating with other women and men and having clandestine love affairs, which will undermine the unity and prosperity of their family. If moral behavior is lacking to this extent, the dissatisfaction in their hearts will begin to come to fruition, and they will be full of trouble and worry. Even work, which is the basis of steady family life, will be disrupted, and the children will all be involved in the prevailing air of dissension. But those who continue to act in immoral ways that are progressively worse than the foregoing are sure to find that sooner or later all those things which were firmly established suddenly start to flare up into dissension and trouble, like a pot full of water which is hit and breaks, and all the water pours out and disperses at once. So if the world wants prosperity and civilization, it is still necessary that it should conform to the standards of moral behavior. And how can anyone, truly speaking, object to the principle of truth which is moral behavior, which has been in the world since time immemorial? Natural moral behavior does not have to be asked for as precept from a bhikkhu, a monk, or from someone in an official capacity in a wat, monastery, or elsewhere before it is established. For if a person respects and likes those characteristics within himself which are right, good, and graceful, and if he behaves in this way personally as well as in association with others, avoiding actions which are contrary to such good behavior, it indicates that he has moral behavior within his character. The reasons why morality arises in the heart and in the behavior of a person are, firstly, that it arises from a person's inherent nature, as already mentioned above. Secondly, that it comes from association with wise people, such as recluses and teachers, and that after learning from them, one puts their teaching on moral behavior into practice. These two things are sufficient to arouse the practice of moral behavior in oneself, and to enable one to become a person in whom it is constantly present. These two will also be sufficient to preserve one's own status and that of one's family in all forms of society with which they have dealings, and it will maintain a freedom from suspicion and doubt both within one's family circle and amongst friends. Lay people may practice only the five sila, and while their activities are within the bounds of moral behavior, it will enable them and their families to be at ease with a clear heart. As for the eight, ten, and two hundred and twenty-seven sila, they are based upon the five sila, and are progressively more refined for those people who wish to practice the higher levels of moral behavior. But both in the practices of maintaining zila and in paying attention to what one is doing, the rules or the method differ progressively from those of the five zila as one goes higher. Summarizing briefly, zila of every grade is for the purpose of controlling outgoing exuberance in the behavior of body and speech. For one who practices it correctly, it is also for the purpose of living in a peaceful way with a happy and easy heart. And if one associates with other people who themselves maintain sila, it is essential that one should oneself be a good person. But those who have low or vulgar minds are not likely to understand the necessity for sila, because they do not want to become good people, nor to get involved in the world of good people, and they always try to break up the happiness of others and to instigate trouble and anger in the world whenever they get a chance to do so. One should not think that moral behavior is exclusively a human faculty, for even animals can have some aspects of it. One needs only to observe the animals which people look after in their homes to see how, in some degree, the hearts and the behavior of animals are permeated with the nature of tamma. 
one who always has moral behavior as the basis of his character, besides being good-natured, having the confidence and being popular with the people of his village or district, will also be good-natured within himself every day of this life and the next life also. Moral behavior is therefore a quality which is always necessary in the world.